Uh-huh. You know, we're, we're recording, recording, so you're alive. Awesome. Well, welcome, you guys. Glad to be in this space. Uh, I know everyone on the call, so we'll, we'll skip introduction. That takes out the time right there, but definitely glad <laughs> to see y'all. Seen some faces I just learned I haven't seen in over a year. Doesn't seem like it. Time flies, right? Uh, yeah. Mm-hmm. But definitely excited to have this conversation, uh, especially knowing just thinking about career resumes, all this tying in. So um, definitely want to bring this conversation just around identifying skills, because I think that's going to be a major part moving forward for everyone, uh, myself included on this call, something I have to go back to often. So um, definitely want to go ahead and and jump in on that. Quick post check. I'm gonna do a quick icebreaker since since we're on time. Uh, who? Give me a just just drop a Y in the chat if you if you want to see snow this year. We got some flurries. Uh, <laughs> we got some flurries yesterday. It was like that was the only thing we got this year. Do you want to see <laughs> snow at all, or could you go without it forever? I'm with you, just I'm with you on that. Okay, I'm good without. I'm good with that. If I am, I am also on the no train. Oh, at least three times a year. The only reason I don't like snow here in North Carolina is because it shuts the city down. Yeah. So it's not. I, uh, I hear that. Well, awesome, y'all. Well, I'm going to share my screen and I'll jump right in. And if um, y'all know, uh, feel free at any point, like I'll be talking, take yourself off mute, cut me off. If you have a question, there'll be also time for questions at the end, but as much as possible, you guys know I like it to be interactive. I want questions, so feel free to stop me, engage at any point. Uh, Tommy and Carrie, Tommy and Kelsey, if y'all have anything to say as well, I know I have to, used to I'm used to doubling that up. It's so, so weird. Yeah, I'm used to doubling that up. If y'all have questions, um, Definitely jump in as you're seeing as well. This is definitely a team team effort here. So I am going to share my screen now. So again, this one I really wanted, this presentation really wanted to talk about identifying these trans, transferable skills. So we all have been in position with lived experiences, family responsibilities, um, part-time jobs, full-time jobs, and we have so many different skills. I mean, some that we can just come out and, and easily identify, and some that we've gained and we don't even know we have them. So um, really wanted to touch base on this because I think this is a big part of writing a resume, of helping you, just your own career trajectory, helping to build your network. So identifying different transferable skills. And, and the real focus today is not on skills that we can hard skills so nothing we earned in a certificate right no not coding these are um skills that don't often show up so again this is welcome i skipped that because I, I saw so many faces up here i wanted to jump right in so and and quick agenda so just want to talk about what are transferable skills you'll see then really going into incorporating skills in a resume and also knowing that we may have um, students that are first year um, freshmen, we may have no longer students who are now alumni. So I really built this out just to kind of give an example. So I'm not going deep into resume skills, but just something that you can also take and, and you know, put it to your own experience as well. And then next is just really articulating skills. We'll do a quick Q&A and closing. And like I said, the Q and A is built in there, but also at any point, um, ask questions. I will let y'all know I have a hard time managing the chat and talking at the same time. So somebody stop me. I do not get offended at all. So just thinking about transferable skills. So you know these are the skills that you can transfer and take with you from one experience to another. So who can just give me an example of what they think a transferable skill is? Yeah, I know I will hold and pause until I get some action. <laughs> What's a transferable skill? Um, 
Photoshop. Photoshop. Who agrees? Who agrees with Brian? Jump in the chat. And someone said good communication in the chat. Good communication. I think it's a combination of both. So I think Brian, you're on the right, you're on the right. The Photoshop is definitely a skill. And we and when we're thinking about transferable skills, Photoshop is one that you can use at different places. And then communication skills. Who said that? I'm blanking on the chat with that. With that Frederick. Communication iPhone. skills is, is iPhone said it. iPhone, I think that's for just jumped in. Uh thinking of just communication skills, I think that's also like more along the on the lines of transferable skills and where you build this skill and learn, you can communicate in different spaces, communicate in different ways. So I like both answers and we'll, we'll dig into a little bit more. So I pulled this from NACE. If anybody's familiar with NACE, it's National Association of Colleges and Employers. Um, and this is from going into the latest 2020 job report where a lot of employers are interviewed and this there the skills they say are most needed for entering the job force. Uh, and I just wanted to get you guys thoughts up here because uh, I heard communications also and just thinking about skills here. So going back to going back to Brian's point, so Photoshop is definitely a skill. It's, a, it's, it's more of a hard skill and then you pull out the transferable skills from that use. So thinking about in terms of each one of these, and these are ranked in order from like rank number one. I have another slide that's going to really dig deep into a little bit of these, but these are the top eight career readiness competencies that organizations, especially uh, the one that's partnering with colleges. So um, think handshake, think career centers. So these are um, who were on the survey and got employed. And I'm looking at the top four, just critical thinking, problem solving, communications, teamwork and collaboration, and digital technology, um, because I think all of those are going to encompass kind of, it's going to bring in five, six, seven, and eight. I think your communication skills, teamwork is really going to help develop those critical thinking and problem solving skills. And the use of technology now, I think that number will probably, <laughs> probably be uh, way closer to number one here in the next four years. Um, and just going into diving in. So these breaking those down of everyone who responded to employers across the country. This is the list of what they're saying. So 85% of the folks are saying problem solving skills is the number one thing they look at when they look at a candidate. Um, the ability to work on a team, teamwork, communication skills written. And then you'll see it all kind of, you know, those are the top four. And then you can see how their rank going out in order. Communication skills, verbal. So if you combine that with the other one, communication skills, whoever said that earlier, I think that's really ranked high, highly as well. Um, but just wanted to get you, get you guys to see it from a sense of kind of what employers are looking for. And like, these are skills that come out on the resume. So kind of getting away from the old, I don't want to say the old thinking, but thinking about writing job descriptions, right? If this is what employers are saying they're looking at and the number one skills, how do you pull these skills out from a job description? How do you list kind of what you did on the job and put it in a, in, in a format to where employees can see it as a skill? So, for example, I know I was working with the tour guide at Elon. I know most folks know I'm at Elon now and just they were talking about communication skills and, and they're majoring in marketing, but they haven't had a marketing intern. And I was like, well, you literally work as a tour guide. Your, your communication skills are on display every day. You greet families, you lead presentations, you do this um, and kind of work with, you know, that student on how to de develop their resume to a point that shows these skills. Any questions so far? Any surprises? Any Anything about this slide that stands out uh, from the employer or student perspective? I know if I'm seeing this as a college student, I'm like, how am I going to get all this or pull this on a resume? Anything that stands out? <laughs> so 
So from that list, I want to focus on two today, just because I know we're strapped for time and I can get I can get into the weeds on this. I really like discussing and talking about this. So thinking about the two that kind of I think communication skills and teamwork really build out those critical thinking and problem solving skills as well, because you can use these experiences. Um, and if you really give concrete examples, it really shows up as being a critical thinker, problem solving. Yeah, yeah. Teamwork is problem solving, right? So that really shows up. But so in terms of communication skills, I heard, I know somebody said it earlier, but like speaking clearly and confidently, resolving difference of opinions, appreciation of people with different languages and cultures, ed editing digital media, all of these are things that we use every day um, in some shape or form. And then how do we tie this into a resume is the challenge, right? How do we tie these concrete skills and descriptions and um, create and deliver effective presentations, ask appropriate kept questions for specific information. Um, I think that's an underrated skill, like learning to ask questions and, and asking the right questions, I think is an underrated skill that, that needs to show up more on resumes that come across my desk that I see. Um, and we'll talk about those later. Oh, also so thinking about the questions. Um, this meme just always cracks me up. How many people have been in class, staff meeting? <laughs> And being in this situation where somebody asks questions. So now that you see this and seeing that's a key communication skills, give them a little slack. But this is me in the staff meeting, especially when I'm, especially when it's 10 minutes past and somebody's asking a duplicate question, but just something that comes up. Uh, and then thinking about, so in terms of communication skills, thinking about how you gain this experience, just as being a college student, just as being somebody who's been in, like recently graduated from college, how, did you develop these communication skills during your college experience or your work experience? And these are just a few roles. These are just a few I have here, but who can give me a concrete example of just some communication skills that think of yourself from senior to high school to now, like in terms of group assignments, in terms of a research project. Has anybody here developed any communication skills that they think would be something that you could pull out and put in a resume. And it doesn't have to be in a job setting that, that focuses on communication. I'm checking the chat now, because I'm going back and forth. I see you for Hello, can you hear me? Who's that? I heard the last bit. No, there you go. OK. Um, yeah, I think that's a specific idea of like what would be what I would put on the resume, but I know um, a useful skill is, uh, I guess, problem solving and like working with uh, teammates to solve a problem, especially when like the the supervisor isn't um, or like the head of the project isn't like yeah. involved in it, like the actual um, mm -hmm. work. Mm -hmm. Then you're kind of like left amongst yourselves to to deal with whatever problems arise. That's a that's a great example. And that could that could be in like a group project uh, setting and or like a work setting. Yeah, no, I appreciate that. For that's a great example. Um, often when I have meetings, individual meetings, group meetings, I, I like to ask these questions because it helps me. And I don't want to. I'm, I won't pick on you right now to, to delve deeper, but normally I'd say, give me an example, which is give me a time where you've had to, to deal with that um, just to kind of see see that skill. Is there a time specifically you sound like that came from a, a place of experience right there? Someone in the chat also put, um, I understand how we can connect all those skills to anything that we do as college students, but what if they ask for a specific experience and you don't have any other than anything that you obtained as a student? Yeah. That's a that's a that's a great question, um, and that's one where it you dig a little deeper. So it might this thinking outside of maybe what the job details, right? So thinking outside if it's a specific, I think that's where you identify the skills because it's asking a specific experience that you've done. You may not have done that, but there's a way that you can tie an experience to that skill to pull out the skill to show something. So 
I'm going to jump to the next screen. I think that was perfect timing for that. Great question, Giselle. So thinking about a resume example, um, and this is going back to that tour guide experience, and this is just something, like I said, the first time we we connected, and she's in the marketing jobs and says she has not had any marketing experience. So we pull up tour guide down, we list as a university tour guide, and I said, give me the two things that you do the most. Um, and the first, this isn't the full bullet point, but we put develop strong communication skills when giving campus tours as a mission tour guides. Like that's a concrete skill. That's something that, A, I'm seeing the presentation side of it. I know you're interacting with different people. Now, when we put the bullet point together, we added different things. Like we, we started quantifying things like how many tours given on a weekly basis, number of people encountered on a weekly basis. So it's able to like quantify and make it stand out more. So develop strong communication skills, skills when giving over 50 tours in a given week. So pulling out small things, um, and then thinking about the audience, uh, we developed this last one. So adaptive communication style to suit the audience. And this is, for example, when speaking to respective students, uh, families, and just thinking about it from diverse groups as well. Um, we're, we're, we're not always, you know, speaking with peers is different than speaking with parents and bring, speaking from students. I know um, when I have a meeting with um, colleagues, a staff meeting or a senior leadership meeting, it's all different. So you have to adapt your communication style to the audience. And I think being able to pull that out is a skill in itself. So that's two things. Um, when this particular student applied for their marketing position, uh, we didn't put the roles of a tour guide there. We put the two things that really showed what they were asking for from the communication standpoint, because that was the piece where she felt like she hadn't done a specific role and how we pull that ex um, example out. Um, so this is just one way of tying that in if you don't have it. So just going back to your question, if you haven't had that experience, I would think of along the lines of those group projects. And these are things that you can really put on a resume and title it research project or and, and iron out kind of what Frederick said earlier, if it's a time where you had to work with a team or especially dealing with, with leadership, like Frederick said, that's conflict management. That's another skill that, that, that kind of pull out. If it's, issues within the group and you're dealing with that, that's that's conflict resolution. So there's different skills to pull out of there. And then you want to highlight that experience. So if you, you're showing conflict resolution, going back to Frederick's example is, okay, what happened? Um, me personally, I use the STAR method. So think about the situation. I list the task, name the action, and then name the result. And that's how I think about laying out a bullet point. So again, Thinking about the resume in this sense and tying that experience, it looks that's why I said it looks different than kind of the traditional format of three to four bullet points of kind of what you did. And think of it as a term of taking two or three bullet points and identifying one situation and highlighting that skill used in that situation. Because also, I think with the competition for jobs nowadays, uh, just to be honest, <laughs> that. I don't think people are going through looking at kind of job descriptions or kind of what you did on the job anymore. There's so many apps coming in. Like you, this is another way to make yourself stand out by being able to give concrete examples of what you did and allow employees to kind of like read between the line. Um, I went to a conference for latest trends and, and kind of what we're seeing on the career employer side. And the head of college recruiting at Deloitte stood up in the room after like an hour talking and he was like we want to hire somebody that's ready to work we want to hire somebody that has no experience and just want to be able to see the hunger so there he uh they gave a, their breakdown was if this if a student only had worked at Burger King uh we can kind of imagine what somebody does in that role right so what did you do in that role that stood out like what is the time going back to Frederick's example where you had to use your conflict management skills um were you named employee of the week like anything like that stands out of the bullet point and less of kind of day-to-day -day, daily tasks so less task-based stuff moving to more skill-based stuff i'm also going to pause right here because i think oh no i'm not gonna pause. <laughs> 
going back to showing in teamwork. So this is another area where I think things come out that you can highlight. And these are things that I think can go across different different experiences, right? So use of, use of technology to support team working, management disagreements or conflict, um, demonstrate openness to the ideas of colleagues. These are all skills. These are all things that employers would like to see because again, like I say, they come in, especially from the student perspective and knowing that is limited experience, they kind of know exactly where students are at. So they really want to see things that you did, those experiences that you did in college, those things that came out in group projects, um, students that babysitting, like what did you learn from that experience? What are some things that you could pull out and thinking of in terms of this? Kind of the same thing. So these are just thinking in terms of skills developed during work and study. So building those trust and relationship between colleagues or classmates. So working with that, uh, diverse group members. If you facilitated a team meeting, uh, one of the things I always ask students when we meet for resumes is, <laughs> tell me about your club experience. Because they'll have no experience listed and they'll talk about the club. And then I find out all those great things like, they're the treasurer or the class president, and they they were the ones that pulled, like, set this weekly meeting and taking notes during the meeting to send out to the larger group. So all of these things are, like, skills that you could pull out on the resume um, to showcase without, like, listing the exact activities of, like, what you did in that club. So just thinking about this one again with this tour guide, um, to pull out leadership skills. Uh, this is one example, and it like took on the role of a leader when taking part in an open house event on campus. I, I wrote this word for word, but when we wrote the bullet point, it was like, okay, tell me the situation, what happened, how can we put this as a resume? Um, and the example was two team members called out sick, one person that was supposed to be leading everything, uh, all of this fell on her plate, and just kind of highlighted that experience, and, and we wrote that up as a bullet point. Or Kind of what you see inspired and motivated fellow student ambassadors to engage with many prospective students as possible. So these are more concrete examples of just how to list them. It's not what you think of. If I said, who can give me what they think a tour guide does? And we can name the bullet points of that, but, but these are really taking experiences and writing them out. So I'm gonna pause just for a second, because I know this is, I gave a lot and I feel like I'm talking a lot. So I definitely want to take questions and I can't see the chat as well. So I want to take. Uh, thank you for dropping that in the, the chat, Tommy. I'm also um, going to, I'm also going to drop this in the chat just for everyone to see it in a minute, just because it has a lot of the skills that we pulled up earlier. It's one that I was looking at earlier. That's a great kind of like internal checklist as you're, as you're, you guys are starting to think about different skills that you can identify on your own. But go ahead, Frederick. That's yeah, um, I noticed or on one of the earlier slides, one of the skills that it was like computer skills. Mm -hmm. And when you at first asked the question, like thinking about uh, car transferable skills, I was thinking um, more specifically, like being good with Excel, mm -hmm. but um, you said like Photoshop is is a little too uh, specific. So I was wondering if Excel will be too specific to be like a transferable skill. Yeah, I I would think of Excel more as a so as more of a hard skill. It would fall under computer skills, so it would fall under um, computer and then maybe like Excel or things that fall within that category because there's something you can dive deeper in. So as you know, Excel can go deep too as well. So you can make Excel a skill by itself and really go detailed into what you can do in Excel. A lot of people, <laughs> a lot of people put Excel because I know you know how to use Excel very well. A lot of people put Excel on a resume and we'll ask like, tell me what you do in Excel. Like, and they'll be like, yeah, I can, um, I know how to <laughs> sort columns and you listed as a skill. Um, that's why it says more of a hard skill because we're thinking about pivot tables and being able to sort by this. So if you list something as a skill, it's not that you're able to use this. You can really go into detail. And that's what I think uh, separates that as more of a hard skill because you can go detailed in Excel. And then kind of the same thing with Photoshop. If it's 
I'd say it will be more of a hard scale. It might be under, it could be under computer. It could be under, like, I, I would list things like Acrobat use, um, Excel, more in that hard skill. And then if there was a time where you use that, say, use it as a project or with classmates, then you can pull out the soft skill from using that. Did that answer your question a little bit? Or the, yeah. yeah. But no, great question. And I'll, I'll pull this list I sent everyone else out, but just looking at that list right there and looking at the, the types of individual skills, if anybody has any questions about those as well, because next part, next part of the presentation, I want to go back into that list. So if everybody feel free to pull up that file, just because I think that's the easiest one to kind of talk through and walk through on the next step. And then we'll kind of go from there. I have a uh, more of a thought. Yeah. That I guess I can try to like formulate into a yeah. question. Um, so another thing that, that I think about that I run into a lot when I do group work in classes. Yeah. Um, it seems like at the beginning stages, I, I'm always going to have to get to the point where, um, like when you're first thinking of ideas, um, and maybe you you have a an idea in your mind, but somebody else has an idea, and it's just the process of like choosing when to when to speak up or when to just like let somebody else uh, somebody else's idea be like the main focus of the project, and then the scale of like switching your focus into that idea and kind of building up that idea instead of trying to get yours um, to be the main one. Mm -hmm. So I guess, like, would that be a skill that you would, that you can, like, formulate into a, a bullet point on a resume, or is that a skill that's indicative of, like, one of these general bullet points? Yeah, no, great question. I don't I, know if that makes sense. But. Yeah, no, it does. Um, I think it's a combination of both. I think it's a skill you can pull. I think it's... I think it's a skill that you can list in the bullet point if the situation is right. I also think depending on the situation, it's something you can highlight in the cover letter. So I always like to say situations like that and you want to pull out because what I heard you talk about just in that was innovation. I heard you talk about active listening with, with your teammates, being able to take a step back to, to listen to the, the views of the group while offering your own. So those are all different kinds of skills. So if there's a specific going back to the star method like if there was a situation or a task based like what was the action taken there like did you did you end up going with what the group suggested did they were they receptive to your ideas and did you you know make the assignment based off that and then what was the result either way so i think it's a way to highlight that skill and if it's you know something that's pertaining to the exact position or job so if it's um a computer science project that you were working on and your work experience, I would maybe highlight that as a research project and enlist that because that talks about dealing with exactly those job descriptions. But if not, that's something you can put in the cover letter as well. Like as a time you learn, you learn this skill when working on this project and this happened. So you can do a combination of both. And that's really when it's kind of deciding you want to pull that skill out and should you list it as a bullet point or can you could tailor it and put it into the, the cover letter? That's a great question. Thank you. Mm -hmm. That's one that, and that's the, that's the tricky part. And I, when I, when I think resume now, depending on what the job is, I think highlighting as much towards that position uh experiences towards that position and kind of what they're looking for so if they're looking for specific skills it's a combination of infusing your experience and those skills with the position and then also um finding out or not finding out deciding what to put in the cover letter that's going to make you stand out because the resume is the first thing they see that's the first thing that usually grabs folks and see okay he had you know they have this experience or this skill and then what you put in the resin, um, what you put in the cover letters of like the icing on the cake, it goes into more detail about the experience, the task, and shows the result, but also highlights the skills. 
So it's really just highlighting, like figuring out the where to highlight the skill at, but definitely highlighting the skill in a sense. So it's, I would say you would never leave it off the resume. Uh, you might end up cutting it at some point, and that's like after working and we, we build out everything, and then you it, it kind of starts to make sense. Like uh, you have all these skills listed, all these experiences listed, and then you'll ask yourself, does this experience make, make sense for this job? Or does it make sense on this resume? Do I need to put it on the cover letter? And just thinking about or vice versa. So usually how I go about it and I, I have one version of a resume and usually if I apply to a job, I just tailor it specifically to that one. I think that's the under underrated thing. I think especially as students and, and being in this position with everything going on, it's, it's easy to use the stock resume and send that to a bunch of jobs, but it really like taking that extra effort to tailor it specifically to the job, even if it's changing a few things to just really focusing on what the job is asking for, I think is a real strength and something that gets, um, gets folks noticed a little bit more. Yeah, I was gonna say, I feel like that's, you could say that's a, a skill in and of itself. Yeah. Um, not necessarily you want that you put on a resume, but just something that you, you gotta learn and to be really useful once you get the hang of it. All right. And you just, yeah, articulating your skill is a skill in itself for sure. Um, and, and kind of that's what, you know, going into the takeaways, it's a good way of practice. I'm segueing right here. Just, just thinking about, as, as an example, just a, a good way to pull out skills is, you know, the first step I always like to do is describe your proudest moment. So think about what was your proudest moment? Was it something you did in a research group? Was it spend the spend the summer as a camp counselor and taught kids how to swim? Like what was your, um, and describe it. So really like write it down, think about what it is um, that happened. And this could be from any experience. If, if For folks who didn't work or do anything and had to babysit all summer, like what was your proudest moment from that experience? And really write that out. Um, Second step, and this is where as college students, as recent alumni, you, um, students that may have graduated already have access to the career center, the career center still. Like um, you you have the resources still there. Um, you can pull up a list of the transferable skills. You can use the one I sent you, but this is where I would just spend time identifying, all right, what skills do I currently have? And maybe just create, your, create a checklist uh, of the ones that you see that you have how you used it, and just kind of keep an inventory. It's a great way to just, as you're starting to build the skills, it's a good way to see also skills you may not have developed yet or may not experience yet. And that's always a question that comes up, thinking in terms of um, on the interview, just quick show of hands in the chat. Who's been asked to, what are your greatest strengths? And, and this is something that as you start to identify your skills, this has come up. And then also on the flip side, the ones that you don't check off are the ones you need to work on. So when they ask you what is your greatest weakness, because that usually comes right after, you have a list of things that you're working on or you've already identified that you need assistance in that area. So that's that's one thing. I don't like that question. I don't like that question either. Uh, that's why I say I'm always going back to them. And that's, that's really helped me. Um, and you guys know, I started this new position back in August, and that was one of the questions. And this is coming from, um, just sharing a personal story, this is coming from a position that need three to five years in college admissions. And I was like, I have zero. But I also put that, I also put that first on my cover letter. So I highlighted all my work in education, like brought out the skills, working with parents. And then the first thing on my cover letter was like, I. You know, I recognize while I don't have three years working in this specific college admissions, I had this many years worth of experience and, and gained these skills over the years. So really highlighted the fact that, yeah, although I haven't done this, I have done this and, you know, I have showcased this skill or uh, put it in terms like that. So I think that's a great way of just, if you're bored, if you need a refresher, if you're starting square zero on your resume, I think identifying skills puts you in a place that's going to be helpful moving forward. Um, 
and they are artic articulating those skills. I'm going back to this next slide. And that's why I said, um, and for, you actually said it a while ago, like the, just the language of articulating the skills, right? That's a that's a skill in itself. That's something, but that goes a long way. So I, in terms of where that goes, like that's just writing a resume. That's going to help you out for a job interview, talking with your supervisor. Salary negotiation, when, when it comes to the point where you have to negotiate your salary, they're going to want to know what you did and they're going to want to see different skill sets. So this, this is something that's going to come um, as you're trying to change and navigate and pivot to another career. Um, again, if you, you're working in a certain field, been in education, you want to switch to computer science, I want to switch to marketing, um, being able to identify what those skills are, I think really go hand in hand. And it, and it takes, it's going to, it takes a little bit of work on the back end. But as you start identifying the skills, these things are something that you keep and and you, you start to develop over the years. You might develop it next semester in a class that you take. You may develop it uh, over the summer, but it's just different skills that, that can be pulled out um, over time. I'm going to stop share here because I just want to have a. I want to have a conversation. We have a Q&A, but I need to screen back big so we can get to. Get to going, y'all know this is this is my favorite. It reminds me of the round table. So, I want to, if anybody would like to, maybe share an experience where they feel like about to enter a field or uh, thinking about in terms of resume, may not have the experience or want to pull out a certain skill. Uh, let's talk about it. Let's let's grab help from the room too. So, I'd love to do that if we have any brave souls willing to. I can also I can also give y'all um, try to pull an example. Reggie, you shared one earlier, and it, and tell me if that was making one up, or that's something that you went through. Let's talk about that one if you don't mind. Your group was that a group assignment? Uh, was that was that, was that was that something that that happened? You refresh my memory a lot of that. Um, working with a group has specific ideas. Um, Want to get them out to the group. Group may have come with something different and being able to accept the, the overall ideas of the group. Is that something? Experience or something like that? Um, yeah, I'm trying to think of like a specific. Mm -hmm. um, I guess I'll just talk about it like generally at first and see if a specific example yeah. comes to me. But um, I found like just in general with group projects where mm -hmm. you have to create a product um, and then you're coming like up with ideas on. Um, okay, I guess yeah. like in, in high school, um, I was in a group with with fairly close friends. Yeah. Um, so the, I guess the dynamic was kind of different, but um, one, of, one of my friends uh, had an idea, or her her ideas, I wasn't really like feeling like <laughs> yeah. that. But um, I, it's a skill to like, not, not shoot, uh, I know what you're saying. You have not, to make not, sure not that like you're not down, right? feeling like, yeah, yeah, um, like you you gotta know when to take a when to like die on a hill, mm. um, <laughs> and if you and if you feel like strongly about your idea, <laughs> it's a it's a good skill to communicate with the other person in a way to where you're, it feels like you're not attacking their idea, right? Um. And so I think in that scenario, I just went along with um, whatever the consensus of the group yeah. was. I think that's that's generally what I do. Yeah. Um, just because of my personality. Yeah. So I guess that's um, a skill that I have to work on. It's like 
Um, the part where I think I lack is if I do defer to another idea, um, I don't, I guess I'm not that quick to like switch my mindset to that idea and, and try to think critically about that idea and, mm -hmm. and build that one up to, to make a good product. Yeah. Um, I feel like it's a good skill to have. I, I mean, right there, I would like, I would love to dive in all the way, but just thinking about what you said right there. I mean, there's a, there's a unpacked a lot. So thinking about listening to someone else's, you know, idea, that's a being able to express your own ideas confidently. Um, if you were able to provide constructive feedback, so you said that you didn't agree and maybe able to provide, this is why you didn't agree. Like thinking about that, not in a disrespectful way, but just you think you disagree um, respectfully, right? And that just facilitates discussion. So being able, I think pulling all that out is a skill. And this is where that STAR method um, really, because now I want to know what happened, right? I wonder what the situation was, like what the task, um, if that, yeah, if the I group work more content. was that, I can provide, provide a little more content if you want. If you want. Oh, yeah. Now that I'm remembering okay. more of it. <laughs> and so it was a, um, maybe you can speak more to this once you get the context. I think it was a, a project on like developing a, it was like a shark tank, shark yeah. tank type thing. So we had to um, think of a product to sell. Um, and I can't remember her ideas or, what my idea was it was just it's different different but, ideas yeah so i get i think like that's that's a little bit more tricky that specific um project because like how do you say that you don't think that person's <laughs> like product is a <laughs> is a good a good enough project to go down that road yeah there there would be there would be um I, I kind of like to jump to the end sometimes. So thinking that helps me. So thinking about the result, what what ended up happening? Let me just ask, what ended up happening in that situation? Um. So. So I just went with whatever the group wanted to do, and then. Oh, I don't remember what. Yeah. No, that's fine. I think actually no. I think there was um, a little a bit of drama with her, and I might be thinking about a different group. But there was drama with like her and another person in the group because um, somebody felt like their ideas were were getting uh, shot down, um, and so yeah, that was like. That was interesting to me because that's the, the, the exact type of thing that I want to avoid. Yeah, which is why I just don't even say anything. Yeah. Um. But at the end of the the project, like, I think we just went with the the girl one, and, and then the, the project went okay. I guess. The, the, I don't remember the, yeah. the final. The other thing I was gonna say, you know, we talk about a lot about resume and cover letters. So even remember the these experience of pulling out these skills is is always another question of uh tell me a time you've had to adapt to a change or tell me a time you've had to manage conflict like these are things that you can actually talk about like you can articulate everything that happened there like what you learned is, is a big part of that like what did you learn from having that disagreement how did you how did you resolve the conflict what did, did you end up did you end up doing something on your own did you end up sticking with the group so depending on what happened it would be how you framed it and i think just identifying what skills you used in that is the key and then deciding where to use that does that show up in your resume does that show up in your cover letter do you save that in your pocket for when it comes up for an interview so thinking about in terms of that way i saw another question come in the chat what is the best way to approach a salary question for example they ask you how much you would like to make that's a great question i try to do as much research as possible going into it um thinking about what what the role is and what the market is. So thinking about it in terms of where we are, we're in the Southeast. Um, looking, If you're looking at a job in San Francisco, you know, it's gonna be a different question. So thinking about the market and kind of doing your prior research, um, 
and then determining the number of that. So I I would have a number. I would always ask, is there a range? Like, what is the range for this position? That's a um, great question to come right back in. How much would you like to make? Um, what is the range for this position? And then you can, if you have your number ready, you can base it off of kind of show them that you've done the research well in this role, in this title, kind of starts off here based in North Carolina uh, or based in San Francisco. That's a tricky question. The transparency around salary negotiations or just salary posting in general is a tough one. So that's one I always try to come load it in case it's not there. Um, and I always try to spin it back to like, what is the range? And so that way they're not providing an exact figure, but now you're asking them what the range is for this position. So if it's outside of your range, you kind of get to know then if they if they tell you. Um, most folks will tell you a range at some point. I think higher education is the only one that does not give you a range at all. But um, if you do your research, and that's a good way to come with a number in pocket. Glassdoor is helpful. Um, if it's a nonprofit um, organization, sometimes they you can look at different reports. If it's, I like to just look at things uh, in, in other states too, just to get a feel. Because sometimes you look at things in this market and it's way different in another market. So just getting a feel. But that's a tough question. I am always, Kelsey. That's, I'm always terrified of that question. Uh, but that's also one where I think also helps the case is laying down those qualifications and showing like what you're qualified for, like what skills you have, what you bring to the table. I think that's another way, um, especially if you if you are put in a position where you have to say the number, you want to back, back that up with experiences, with skills you bring to the table as well. So it's a great question. How would you generally start a cover letter? When I was writing mine, I tried to have a hook in the beginning. I honestly don't feel like it was a good setup for the rest of my letter. No. Yeah, that's, a, that's, that's another one. There's not a set way. Um, I've seen some great ones that had a hook in the beginning. Uh, but if you don't feel like it was a good setup for the rest of the letter, it might be something to rethink and, and come to the drawing board. So I always like to say the first experience is really expressing how much you want the job. That's in that first paragraph. And then kind of go into the, you know, still expressing how you want the job, but then go into more detailed experiences. But the first paragraph in the cover letter, generally, if you just look up, if you were to go on a career site and look at it, it's going to be an introduction, uh, why you're excited for the job and that. But I feel like it's something you could tailor and I wouldn't give up on the hook because it could be something and, you know, based off some experience, you can pull it in. So I will keep it open. Yeah. I love the thought that I should ask Brian as someone, you know, who recently graduated from the job search process, uh, you know, writing cover letters, like, and you're a writer, I would say you're creative. Uh, yeah. Have you dealt with that same problem or do you have any advice there? <laughs> uh, uh, yeah. So, um, I the jokes aside from the chat thing that I wrote, um, I think I have tried really hard to um, to uh, uh, apply to jobs that I'm like incredibly passionate about, and I write everything other than the beginning mm -hmm. first, uh, because I'm the kind of person that like I uh, and I listen to like hip hop music and rap music a lot. And like, everyone goes through the phase thinking like, oh, I'm gonna make music. Um, and uh, one habit that I kept is having like, sort of like a C journal where like things that I think sound like really, really good. Like I just keep, not for any like immediate use, um, but uh, I'm thinking of like jobs I've actually worked at. Mm -hmm. um, I used to work at the museum uh, at UNC. Um, and for my cover letter that I wrote, um, which it didn't make sense why I had one. Um, I, I started talking about how um, how much I loved art and like wanted to bring people into that. Um, and I don't remember it word for word, but like my hook was just the fact that like 
um, this is one of my interests. And then this, this is something that someone in this position would do. Um, I think that's how I would answer that. Yeah. One of the most recent creative cover letters for um, somebody who got hired at the job was a, they went into things that they were passionate about and made, made me think about it. Uh, it was everything but the job. And then they tied the job in last and said, like, it, it was a chance to get to know them. It was cleverly written because it was, they wrote about how passionate they were towards these things and then tied it in with like, and I'm equally as passionate about this position as I am about this. And then went into their experiences. So it can, it can be creative. It can have that hook. So I've seen some interesting ones for sure. I was going to say there was a, um, a, a mentor of mine who shared with me their cover letter and they were doing metaphors of Pokemon the entire time, but it worked because they were also quoting Nelson Mandela at the same mm -hmm. time. So it was like very, so don't, not to say you have to stretch that far, but even getting like that creative, right. Can be a really good hook and like relating it and tying it all the way back to why is it that I want this job? Um, so if you're good at Pokemon or no Pokemon metaphors, that could also be a good way to tie it into your interest into why you want the job. That's awesome. Yeah. Uh, no, the last thing, thing I'll say too is don't, don't, don't try, try to tie in the metaphors. If you don't have them, don't try to be funny. If you know you're not funny, because then if somebody walks into that interview and different from a person at cover letter, that's when sort of things are a little tough. That's it. Oh, oh, that is real. And that's why that's why I like to focus on the, the skill part before the re like thinking about the resume, because it you start learning like things like as you start building the checklist and identifying skills that you have, you, those are real strengths. Those are skills and strengths, right? So if somebody asks you about tell me about the skill or tell me about this position, it's something that you've already recognized in yourself, something that you pulled out, you could talk about. Um we like to call kind of, kind of what you said, Tommy. We like to say, try to eliminate the fluff on a resume. I know it wants to be long, but it's something where if somebody asks a question and it's a answer and it's a quick stumble. It, it's it, it's telling, and especially with with folks who kind of know and they ask. I think when people ask specific questions on a resume, they want to hear because they know a little bit more they want to hear something a little bit more in depth because that, that's why they're asking that specific in question so um i know usually if i ask a question on a resume just in my own experience it, it's something i know about and i just want to get their take on it now i'm not looking for a role i just want to get their take and if it's like thomas said, if it's not if it's not there it's it's, it's a telling sign for sure all great stuff also something that i think you've been bringing up for for um especially like in, in the presentation is a uh, a sort of like taking moments in our lives that are like really important or meaningful mm -hmm. um i can say from like being at the mlk up to like now um i never think of like the instances of leadership that i've had as like defining mm -hmm. my character even though they like almost certainly do and like um one practice in like creative writing a bunch that like creative writing teachers will give you is like taking one moment in time and like dragging it out in the same way that we like mm -hmm. illuminate the fluff or something. Um, and like people want to ask us questions. People like want to see how much you light up when you talk about something. Or um, if you have a challenge, whether that's conflict in a group uh, or your challenge to be like a decision maker, um, uh, people want to see that like um sort of need you to explain why this is common mm -hmm. sense to you and you don't consider that like anything special i think this is how i had to frame it for myself when i thought like isn't this what mm -hmm. everybody does no great point great point that's why i like and i love that you say that because it's there's so many things that come out like uh just having that conversation first i think it is powerful if I, a lot of the resume appointments that I've had, it always started out as a conversation. We might not even get to the resume right off the bat because I just want to know more. And so many things come out. It like, 
like you say, we'll we'll talk about job experiences and um, maybe some work experience over the summer. But then it'll be like the club experience or I shared or I volunteered at this or, you know, while volunteering, like this is what they really like. So really like discovering pa- things they're passionate about within an experience, which I think is something that that is really can be you know, written well and 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 pull strengths out, you know, not intentionally, but it, it really, you know, you get to see the person, um, kind of like you said, see what they're passionate about, see what they light up about, and how that translates to that experience as well. Giselle, I see you. She already gone. Okay. Um, but definitely, I see it's also coming up on time. I'm good. If anybody had any more questions. Uh, and definitely, um, I had my info up there, but y'all know my info hasn't changed. That's basically what I, I was going to put up there. It hasn't changed. So feel free to call, text, and have a conversation. Um, I'm looking at Fred. I know, I know it's coming up, coming up soon. So yeah, I know it's almost out of their time. Uh, okay. I can't find my, uh, emojis, but super excited time. Great. Great question as well, Gordon. Priscilla, how's it going, Diana? I know y'all came in late after I say hello to everyone. It's good, good to, to see, see you. y'all as well. Richard. Too. Richard. Hey, how's it going? It's good. It's good. I was gonna say yeah, Priscilla's sorry, also Priscilla's also coming out too. I, so. I was just about to say Priscilla's on. Yep. It feels way too fast. I don't like that. <laughs> You, you gotta lean, you gotta lean on Brian now. Ask him how he, Brian being out a couple of years. How does it feel? I, I get a mixed bag when I ask him. They're like, oh, well, okay, I can do a couple more years in school. I'm like, no, no, no. Uh, He's like, no. I'm no, still no. thinking like grad school is still on the what horizon mm-hmm. that's on, or if it's coming. No, same. Because it, it just seems like too much work, but I know I'll need to do it eventually. Right. I just don't know when. It, Eventually after, will be. <laughs> yeah. Um, I think after undergrad, um, I was like, it's either one or the other. If I get a full-time job, that's mm. it. Like all the experience I'm getting is like for right here. And I was still definitely stuck in the like, um, I don't know if the thing I want to be is like, um, if it has like a, a title yet, I don't know yeah. what the title is, but like, the skills that take me there um but uh i was at like a conference a couple months ago and like this dude showed me like a really cool exercise uh that definitely just like ruined all of my future plans in like one dinner um which is cool well i'm I'm curious now it's just like oh yeah you want to uh yeah, no. yeah, walk me through. No, I don't know. I want to be, I want my plan ruined. Just tell me. Yeah. <laughs> no, I would do it. You yeah. Some people, some people at certain times just bring you reality checks. You and like, sometimes it's like really good. Um, but yeah. No, mm-hmm. I love it. Uh, um, but yeah, graduate school. I hear y'all. Take a break. Take a break. No jump right in. Take just a gap year. Yeah, just love take it. Love you. Take it. Live life. Celebrate. Take a gap. Yeah. <laughs> celebrate your celebrate your accomplishments. Mm-hmm. Pursue your goal. Pursue your next goals or years or years or years. Yeah. Or years. Yeah. <laughs> Diana, how are you? Go on. Oh. Um. I'm doing good. You know, I just finished up my homework. Um, okay. But, but you know, it's done. It's a done deal. Um, my birthday is tomorrow. Happy, so. happy birthday, Dad. Yeah, <laughs> early birthday. Mm-hmm. I know I need my little pew pew <laughs> app on the, on the text. <laughs> That's awesome. Happy birthday in advance. Thank you. Yeah. Just, it's just, it's, it's, it's too, too. I did um one, I didn't know who was gonna be up here. Uh and I, I 
pull my resume up and let everybody dice Ooh. it up. Well, yeah, that was fun. Ooh. Why do you have that up there? Well, <laughs> it's great. It was a great learning term. I love that. I, I love do too. The orgs on Google Drives, and I see who else applied to the job maybe I got or the job I wanted to get. It's like, I know y'all didn't want me to see this, but I, I need it. Oh, <laughs> yeah. And after that, like, I felt so good. I was like, people really make resumes look like this. Like, people are mm -hmm. using those templates. Um, yeah. Mm -hmm. And that's why I said it's, it's the trend I've seen. Well, the, the trend that we're seeing is it's away from this, the template form, but the bullet, what you put in the bullet points is not the what standard used to be. It used to be write your description down. There used to be quantify, quantify, quantify. And now it's, you know, what one specific thing did you do? And that, that'll suffice for that position. And we're seeing more and more of that. And I'm like, and then the cover letter stuff. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. So. I borderline wrote like paragraphs for my yeah. resume, which is a lot. For a lot of like, I for higher ed and for like, like education, mm -hmm. I feel like it's playing that way. But other people that I've shown my, that are like in accounting and stuff, yeah, think yeah. it's atrocious. So. That's what I say, it's a different field <laughs> as well. Like, you saw yeah. my resume, yes. no, no, that was a paragraph on paragraph. But <laughs> listen, that that's what, when, when you write it, so you are, two things, you already know it's yeah. distinctive. The second thing is now you're up against somebody that might have just That's a regular right. one in. Sure. Seeing this person, seeing this person bullet point, I feel like I'm getting to know this person a little bit. So that's yeah. the tough part. So it's, I always say there's no wrong resume, but it's, it's carefully crafted right. and try to keep that same throughout, whether it's you choosing to go paragraph form or, or if it's bullet the point form. form resume I ever saw um when I was taking classes in like the J school um was someone applying to Spotify and uh they took the template from a Spotify playlist and made that in like the entries of like there. Nice. yeah and we're like that's a once in a lifetime like oh, situation Jesus. um yeah yeah I've been I did one of the um uh, one of the links that y'all said in the chat um how to like oh what jobs are you looking for what's important for you and benefits um and one of them was like ui ux because uh, i've been looking a lot at those like resumes and how people apply to that and some people don't even use um microsoft word or google docs they make their resumes right on like mm -hmm. canva um yeah and i'm like you know what 